you're here to get an in-depth look on board the Princess Cruises Emerald Princess. We're going to take you through the entire cruise experience from start to finish, so you get a good idea of what it's like if you take a trip on board the Emerald Princess. Let's get started. I'm not a big fan of filler, so let's jump right in. I stayed in Dolphin 716. That's an inside cabin. That's an inside stateroom. I almost always stay on inside staterooms because I don't really spend that much time in the room. As far as the main living space goes, I thought this was actually an excellent room. The size was outstanding for the caliber of ship. The television was humongous considering it took up almost that entire corner of the room. I was really surprised with that. Arguably the best thing was the massive closet. I've been on some ships that have no storage space at all. This closet was huge. Even the bathroom had plenty of room to maneuver. There was one thing I didn't really like about the bathroom though, the shower curtain. I would have much rather had an actual door. That said, the rest of the room was pretty well appointed. All the toiletries were pretty nice. Everything was adequate. I can't really complain about anything else about the room itself. I think if you had an inside stateroom of this size with two people, it was plenty of room. Three would be cutting it close, four would be a tight squeeze, but I imagine that would be the same that you'd have on any other stateroom. Taking a look from the far corner toward the door, this is the living space, this is the living quarters. Again, for the amount of time that you're going to spend in the room, it's not really much, and I think this is more than adequate. Let's take a look at the lunch buffet. Cruises are known for their buffets. Emerald Princess cruise ship is no different. The lunch buffet is a pretty tight squeeze. What I mean by that is the layout of the buffet doesn't give you much room to actually maneuver around the other guests. That's one thing that I think was overlooked in the design of this particular cruise ship. You'll probably notice that there's plenty of salad and cold options on board. In fact, I would argue that the Emerald Princess offered more cold options than any other cruise ship I've ever been on. And I've been on quite a few cruise ships. From salads to cheeses, there was plenty of cool options. The buffet tended to be themed. For every single night or every single lunch, there would typically be a permeating theme that would run through the buffet. What I mean by that is one night you may find Italian. One night you may find Mexican. One night you may find Asian cuisine. That's essentially how the buffet options had run. You'll always find some standards that'll run pretty much every day, but there's plenty of things for you to try. Let's take a look at the pool. Emerald Princess had a pretty reasonable pool deck. Even though you can tell that the ship itself is starting to look a little bit dated, there was plenty of seating options around. Some of the decor around the cruise ship might come off as a little boombastic. As you're looking around in the atrium, you'll see that it's a pretty intense experience. There's a lot of colors, there's a lot of design, there's a lot going on. It really is a lot to take in, but overall, it's nice. Here's the nightclub where they'll spin the hits until the wee hours of the morning. You can have some fun up there. This is the main theater. This is where all the shows, the production shows and the variety acts will hold court. Overall, it was pretty entertaining. Let me give you a pro tip for the Emerald Princess. You may want to bring earplugs. The main theater was incredibly loud, and I'm not really exaggerating. Flipping outside, back to the pool deck. This area is known as the Movies Under the Stars deck. There's a big screen TV that'll offer many first-run movies, and you can watch them just while sitting on a cushioned lounge chair outside while you're sailing. It's a great experience. The Salty Dog Grill. That's an outdoor dining venue that's absolutely complimentary that serves up burgers and the like. It's pretty good in a pinch. Coffee and cones. The cones were complimentary, but the coffee was not. A lot of people ended up getting their coffees here. Espressos were very popular on board. Slice. That's the pizza joint on board. It actually had one of the best cruise ship pizzas that is actually available on the seas. I want to get a little bit closer to that lunch buffet so you can get an idea as to see what some of the food looks like. I want to zoom in. Again, this is some of the cold options. I told you that before, there was a lot of different cold options. You could see the cold cuts. You can see the cheese cubes. You can see a lot. There's many different items that'll keep you occupied on the cold side of the buffet. An interesting thing was the freshness of the breads that were offered on board. 
all the different breads were fresh made and they were all very soft and quite flavorful. The focaccias were particularly enjoyable. I want to show you again how we're walking past so many salad and fruit options. This was where the Emerald Princess really excelled. These all did rotate daily. So beside these, let's make our way over to the warm options. There was always two soups that were offered every single day. They all rotated as well. Variety is considerable on the Emerald Princess buffets. There are plenty of different options that, that consistently were rotated daily. You might not find every single thing suits the bill for you, but I'm sure you'll find something that's enjoyable that you like. If I were going to give you a tip, I would make sure that you head to the buffet only on times where it's not mobbed with people. If you head to the buffet around 12 o'clock, this place gets so packed you won't actually be able to function. Desserts were also offered. One thing that I did appreciate was that they had decorated the plates for the desserts. I thought that was a really nice touch. They didn't have to do it, but they went ahead and tried. Now, let me tell you one thing that I absolutely did not like about the buffet. The actual seating experience was poor. Emerald Princess made the bizarre choice to only offer utensils at the table. The problem was you would never find utensils at any table and would have to hunt them down. It was a big problem on board. Everyone was complaining about it. Let's flip back to the positive. The rear of the ship was one of the most interesting places to hang out. The views are incredible. The wind is always blowing. It's a nice place. Let's take a look at the promenade deck. Cool thing about the promenade, you can circle all the way to the extreme bow of the ship. You can have your Leonardo DiCaprio moment up there. Some people will spend some time in the casino. Casinos at sea are one of the most popular entertainment options that there are on board. A lot of people will end up trying their luck. On board, you'll find slot machines, table games, roulette, craps. They have enough to keep you busy considering the size of the cruise ship. They do have a players club on the casino. The interesting thing about that players club is it doesn't use a card. It'll also use your medallion. If you play, you can earn some points to be redeemed for things like free drinks on board. I heard that some people ended up getting free meals in the premium restaurants, which will take you through once we get through the casino. One thing I did like about this layout is that it was very spacious. You were really not on top of anybody in the casino because it was so nicely spread out. This is Sabatini's. Sabatini's is the premium specialty restaurant on board that specializes in Italian food. The cover charge let you get an appetizer, entree, dessert. I'm going to walk you through the restaurant and then show you some of the foods that I was able to eat while eating at Sabatini's. I started off with an appetizer. The appetizer I had was the burrata. It was delicious. Really well done. I followed it up with the soup. It was a creamy soup. I did feel a little bit guilty after eating it and then followed that up with the sole. It was a nice piece of fish. By far my favorite part of the meal was the dessert. It was a sampler of every dessert that they had in the restaurant. I thought this was extra enjoyable. Across the way was a place called Adagio. Now, this was a bar, this was a lounge that a lot of people would just go to and chill out. It was a very low-key, quiet lounge, but the decor made it a nice enough place to just relax. This would be a good lounge to pick if you just wanted a place to relax and chat. If you wanted to just talk, this would be the place to do it because it wasn't overpowered by music. By far, one of the most popular places on board was the International Cafe. This place was located right at the base of the atrium, and it's 24 hours. There was constantly a flow of people here. One of the biggest parts of any cruise ship is the main dining room experience. Let's take a look at a typical menu at the main dining room. I'll take you through what I got. First course, the crab cake. Now, when you look at it, it looks nice, but there was a problem with it. When you crack it open, it's not much of a crab cake at all. It really is just a bread ball. I followed that up with a gnocchi. These weren't so bad, but it's actually more like the crab cake. After the pasta course, I went for the Greek meatballs. These were enjoyable enough. I wasn't a big fan of their tzatziki. It was a little gelatinous. This is the hazelnut bar. This was a strong entry in terms of what they offered. Explorer's Lounge. This served as the de facto comedy club on board. There was always something every single night offered at the Explorer's Lounge, typically in the way of a comedian or an activity. The ship is a little bit bigger than what's considered a mid-side ship. When you see it from the outside, it's nice enough. 
Why I say that is because certain parts of the Emperor Princess are showing their age. For every part that they renovated, like this outside miniature golf course, there's other parts of the ship that they kind of left hanging. For example, this shuffleboard court almost looks like it's a relic from 1992. Other parts, as you're walking around on the outside, had a pretty healthy dose of rust. I think they really need to take care of that. Specialty dining was very popular on board the Emerald Princess. The Crown Grill is one of the premier specialty restaurants on board. Now, for the cover charge, you get a choice between an appetizer, a soup and salad, an entree, and a dessert. In my opinion, I think the Crown Grill offered the best specialty dining option on board the Emerald Princess. In terms of the quality of the food that's offered in the Crown Grill versus the quality of food that's offered in the main dining room, you'll see the Emerald Princess's Crown Grill is head and shoulders above what's offered in the main dining room. This will become very clear the second they bring the cheese bread to the table. When you compare the fresh warm cheese bread that they offer in the Crown Grill, you'll see it doesn't compare to what they give you in the main dining room. The crab cake actually had crab in it. Compare that to the main dining room. The French onion soup was also delicious. The quality of the cut of the porterhouse was also excellent. Overall, the Crown Grill was well worth the cover charge. The quality versus the offering was perfect. So overall, the Emerald Princess was a great experience. Even though the ship itself was a little dated, as you can see in this stairwell, it's well worth the, the price. And if you're looking for a place to get away. So if you enjoyed the tour, if you enjoyed the look at this Emerald Princess, I hope you give me a like or subscribe. Thanks again for joining, and hopefully you'll take a look at some of the other videos that I offer. Safe travels and enjoy your time aboard Princess Cruise Line and the Emerald Princess.